So you're welcome back. This is Today with John and Helen. Yep. Now, Helen, mm. um, I'm surprised that uh, there's no sign of you taking part in the marathon. My today. joggers uh, and track suits, they are, they are in the makeup room. What does that mean? Does that it mean I took part. You took, I it hasn't even started, Helen. No, I was part of the early, the very first. Um... <laughs> Helen. What did you expect I, to hear? I, I know it when you are fibbing. What did I you I don't want to say you are lying, but you, I know it when you are fibbing. You see, your nose twitches yeah. a little. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah? But, okay. Helen, yeah. seriously speaking, you know, you know, we also talk about life, uh, lifestyle mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. wellness. Mm -hmm. You know, keeping fit is very important and nigerians are really really keeping fit if you went to the stadium any of the stadiums every saturday morning you'll be amazed entire okay. family members there okay young ones the big fathers and the mummies and mm. it's amazing what's going on yes. you know people have mm. suddenly just woken up mm. to the fact that they need to stay fit to stay alive yes and that's the truth mm. we need to stay fit to stay alive mm -hmm. because we already we have enough to contend with true, all right true, true. so uh our appeal to you all is to be like john and helen keep fit <laughs> and stay alive do you keep fit john <laughs> you know and and before we leave this subject matter I, i'm so impressed about um i mean on the preparedness you know of the lagos state government the information dissemination no that was perfect maybe Top not notch. too early but came at the right time, yeah. you know, and got us all ready so that, no, that not too many people are actually, caught. Because yeah. uh, it uh, helped me this morning. Mm. I knew when to leave home. Mm. I knew which route to take. And I do hope that sitting here, uh, that uh, a lot of our friends out um, there will be finding it uh, relatively easy, yeah. mm. you know, navigating. So thumbs up for Lagos State. Yes, of you course. Know? So now back to, the front, back to the front burner <laughs> for today. We're talking tradition. tradition. Yes. We're talking tradition. And uh, we all know that tradition refers to the forms of artistic heritage True. of a particular culture, the beliefs or customs instituted by societies and governments mm. and passed down through generations. John, tradition is also behavior and ideas with a motive of preserving, I like that, preserving the past and the origin in a bid to spread importance, keeping behavior and beliefs immortal. Hmm. How does that sound? You would need to unpack that for immortal. me. Immortal. You, know you, know? you know, my brain takes things in, uh, in little chunks. Well, unlike culture that, <laughs> that, you know, that moves with modernization and everything, mm. tradition is tradition. Anyway, Helen, yes. to help us unpack tradition today, we have two guests. And uh, they would uh, assist us in peeping into the meaning of tradition and its relevance mm. to the family and the society. Uh, the first person, right, yeah. is from the University of Lagos, and she is the first female professor of mass communication and the third female professor of mass communication in the entire history of Nigeria. Mm, impressive. She holds a BA in linguistics, and that's from the University of Port Harcourt. She has an MSc in mass communication, again, from Unilag. She also has an MA in gender and development from the University of Sussex, England. A PhD. Also a PhD in communication <laughs> arts from the University of Ibadan. Our guest is a British Chevening scholar and international development consultant and more. Reading her uh, profile yes. is like she has been in school. It's all like running the marathon. Yes. <laughs> the academic <laughs> marathon. Please join us to welcome Professor Abigail. Abigail, yes. Mm -hmm. Abigail Ogwezi Ndisika, a thoroughbred academician and consultant in social and behavioral change, communication, and other fields. Wow. Welcome, Prof. Prof. And happy belated birthday to you. We are aware that you had a big bash. COVID compliant, of course, on the 5th of this month. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Prof. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And good morning, viewers. 
Thank you, Prof. Your, your profile felt like running the marathon. Intimidating. And uh, yes, intimidating is the word. So we first want to acknowledge all that you have achieved, the, your position in the academy, academia, mm, yeah? Mm. And uh, well done. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, indeed a marathon. <laughs> I was always in school all through my life till I got my PhD. Wow. <laughs> there was wow. hardly any break. Wow. So wow. it was indeed a marathon. Your description was quite apt. Good. Thank you. Nobody agreed to keep me in school that long. <laughs> But it's okay. <laughs> I'm happy the way I am. <laughs> so, uh, it's Prof. A, it's, a, it's a family tradition. It's okay. a family tradition. And I'm happy we're talking about tradition today. Two parents of mine were mm. educationists. So okay. um, it runs through the family. You mm. know, almost all is either you have a PhD or you're a lawyer. So it's wow. our family tradition, our family culture. That's how education is. So Excellent. you have no choice. It's a religion. You have to comply. Great, mm. great. Anyway, Prof, your task on this segment is to help us sift the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. In brief, could you just help us situate tradition? In brief, tradition. Well, um, tradition generally is what is handed down from generation to generation. For instance, um, we, we have... Um, the tradition of marriage. For you to say that you are officially with a man, you have to get married. It's our tradition. And we also have our own culture. And the way we do our own thing in, in Nigeria, for instance, we do it with a lot of bash, a lot of parties. So it's become the culture of the entire group. Whether it's in Northern Nigeria, whether it's um, in southern Nigeria, you know, there's always a big bash to go with it. Mm. And when you look at the work of some cultural anthropologists like um, Thomas Husband, Thomas Husband says, um, what is tradition? You know, it's something or the culture of a people is what people do and over a period of time is done in perpetuity. And he describes it as the invention of man. You were not born with any tradition, neither was I. And we were not born with any culture. But it becomes a way of life, and it's done in perpetuity, handed down from generation to generation, so it becomes a way of life. So it's easy for anybody to say it's our tradition. It's easy for anybody to say it's our culture. We were not born with it, they were handed down. Well, it, it, it appears that it's only a thin line between culture and tradition, because what you're, sound, what you're saying sounds like, uh, it feels it. like a deja vu to me. Okay. It's like we've been there before. We've <laughs> examined culture, yeah. we've looked at it, and a lot of things you're saying, you know, also resonate in uh, culture. So how does culture differ from, from tradition? Tradition is part of a culture, but culture is more than a tradition. A cu culture is what goes through an entire group. It's, it goes through an entire group. So it's a shared characteristics amongst an entire group, um, which we've been amassed throughout in our history. You know, respect is part of our culture. <laughs> Everybody, you have to respect your elder, whether you are from Northern Nigeria, from Southern Nigeria, wherever you come from, you have to um, uh, uh, respect your, your elders. You know, greeting is also part of what we do. But you look at the tradition, for instance, in, in um, Western Nigeria, it's something that you have to do. For instance, you have to prostrate. You know, it, it, so, you know, these are things that are handed down, but it's cultural that we greet, it's cultural that we respect our elders. Thank you so much. Then, is tradition peculiar to groups, or are there aspects that cut across, like you may find in culture? Well, um, like your co-host really said, sometimes you see that um, it's a very thin line. Uh, it, it's a very thin line, but because, for instance, your language is different from my language. Mm. It's a possibility. Somebody could speak Hausa language, somebody could speak Yoruba language. But it is our tradition. Language is part of our tradition. 
and you know it's cultural for instance that when you meet people who are of the same linguistic group you know because there are shared characteristics among the entire group you have to speak uh, the particular language that uh, uh, yeah, they understand so culture actually it refers to the behavior of a society not just those handed down from tradition uh, by uh, from generation to generation it's the behavior we are very warm people you know, we are we, we like parties, our culture. So it, it's been done over a period of time. I, I used to imagine my I used to imagine what has happened over the years. I am for your information, I was raised by my late maternal grandmother. Mm. So we had culture, even our festivals that we do now, it's become thing of fun fair, you know, publicity has become part of it. So it's you know, why call why these festivals are tradition? We have modernized the way we do it. So it, it evolves, it evolves. And that is why Thomas Hobsbawm was saying that um, um, culture uh, is the invention of man. But we continue to reinvent our tradition and it becomes our group norm is what we do. So we see it as our culture. So when you tell somebody, why are you spending so much money on burial, for instance, I say that's the way we do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's our culture. Mm. Our grandparents never handed that down to us. But they taught, taught us to get married. They taught us to do burial. They taught us to do naming, um, naming ceremony. That's christening, but we refer it popularly in Nigeria as naming ceremony. But the way we have gone about it is evolved. It's evolved and it's like what is cut, cross-cutting, where people have to do marriage for, for, for days now. And, you know, they need to hire her, uh, get a DJ, get all what have you and all that and all that. Spend huge sums of money, you know. So it's how we do it. You know, we're Nigerians, we're social people. And that is why at a point people can say that uh, uh, um, events or partying is a big business. It's a big business. So we have uh, transformed, it's, it's become the culture, how it is done by the entire group. So if you don't do yours, you look more like a deviant, you know, <laughs> so to say. Yeah. This, exactly. this, this, is, uh, this is quite an interesting, interesting. Uh, aspect sure. of... Uh, culture and tradition that you've, you, you've touched on. Mm. Uh, but I'll tell you something. I, there's, there's something I miss about our culture. Growing up, I remember the masquerades, right? The masquerades, especially during Christmas time. Mm. You know, uh, masquerades from Cross River State, yeah, especially. And uh, I used to look forward to seeing them you know, perform at the end of the year and all of that. But over time, all of this kind of like Fizzled disappeared. Away. It's almost yep. gone extinct now. You know, I, I, I wonder what my daughter will feel when I talk about masquerades now. Because you're in Lagos. She probably <laughs> has only seen pictures of them or maybe when she goes to Delta State yes. where her mother comes yes. from. Yes. Now, Prof, culture is flexible, we are told and dynamic, of course. Mm. Can the same be said of tradition? Well, uh, tradition, it's, it's more static than culture. But actually, they evolve. You are just talking about your daughter, using your daughter as an example. Your daughter, over a period of time, could become a child of cultures, uh, of traditions in contact. She's going to learn um, tradition from the West, Western Nigeria, where she's maybe perhaps born and bred. And like you said, perhaps when she travels with the mom. So after some time, you can see that there will be slight variation. And it goes on and on. Look at the type of wrapper that my parents or our grandparents used to tie um, during their wedding ceremony, their marriage ceremonies in those days. It was the thick velvet-like stuff. But over a period of time, and, you know, uh, all the beads to go with it. Over a period of time, people still use beads these days. But you see, the kind of fabric is different. Some of them used to be 100% handwoven. So wouldn't you say with that, that there's a little shift? Of course, we have to tie traditional rapper when we go for traditional marriage. But some of them are Swiss made now. You know, some of them are Swiss made. So it, it could shift, and it shifts to the extent uh, that our custodians allow it. And I give you another example. It is cultural where I come from for females to circumcise. Very cultural. But now there are laws against it. 
because people have found out that that culture, you know, there's still some fun fair around it uh, because it was used to prove something to our people in the past. When, once you marry, they used to do it then without even anesthesia. My late mom told me that when they want to do that circumcision, you're going to have like eight men hold a woman down. And so it has to be either her siblings and co uh, that will do it. Because you know what happens when they want to do, uh, the part of the body will be exposed. Yeah. And she has to do it when she has her first pregnancy. And why do they do that? Ah. It's a way of proving to people that she's not had any child before marriage because it's done, it's part of um, the tradition, it's part of rites of passage, you know, um, when a woman gets uh, uh, married or she's having her first pregnancy. So when you see a woman that is married and was not circumcised where I come from in those days with that first pregnancy, it's given that she's had a child before that marriage. Wow. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Okay, I do know. Don't ask me. That Don't before ask me we're whether done. I did it or not. Don't <laughs> ask me whether I did it or not because um, I, I, I am of a different generation. So yes. that tells you that tradition can shift. True. I, yes. I became True. much more enlightened. I had read uh, documents. I read it first of all uh, on the pages of the Nigerian Observer, and I had to confront my parents with it. Mm. You know, I had to confront my parents with it that. You see, this thing you people do here, and that we have been told that, number one, it could lead to excess bleeding, it could lead to obstructed um, labor, you know, it could also lead to domestic violence because something has happened to the vulva and the woman, you know. So I, I came up, I had to do a paper on it, the culture of female circumcision. And to talk about the fact that it's all about sexual politics. Okay, bro. You know, because... Okay, bro. <laughs> You need to hold, <laughs> hold it right there. Because, uh, you know, before we are through with the culture series, we're going to go through some of the um, practices, yes. the cultural and traditional practices. And this is one thing that is top on the list. Mm -hmm. All right? Well, but but from, from your, your uh, response to John's last question, you have touched about, you know, the evolution how we this cultural or tradition have moved from one state to another now we have traditional music we have dances we have our food we have clothing and so many other things quickly talk to me how do these evolved how do they evolve well thank you very much i uh, i think that some of the evolution can be um tied to cultures in contact or traditions in contact, let me put it that way. Um, you see right now, um, a lot of people look at the boba that we wear now. Some of them are fitted. Almost a fusion of what they refer to as Igbo blouse and the Yoruba uh, boba. And you have the wrapper. Um, the, the, the people from um, South, South and South East used to tie theirs. The Yorubas, for instance, used to tie their own um, uh, wrapper and use the um, ashoke <coughs> to strap it. But right now, every, the people are putting like uh, straps to um, the mm -hmm. uh, iru, the wrapper mm -hmm. to strap it around, almost like what they do in the in Shekiri land or what they do in um, uh, rivers or delta south, south thereabouts. So you can see there is a gradual evolution. But the reality is that you will also find some characteristics that will uh, let you know that this is peculiar to the tradition of the Europa, so to say. Hmm. So it evolves, but it, it, are, the, we have infusion of we have infusion of um, traditions. I come from Delta states. I come from the South South. I've lived almost all my adult life, you know, in Southwest. And so there, there is there is a fusion. I recall during my traditional marriage, I had two sets of outfits. I, I wore um, boba and rapa and tight ashoke. My mother-in-law is from Western Nigeria, and my father-in-law is from Delta State. And I also had my two rapa, which tells you where I come from. You know, mm. that is the culture of my people to put my beads and to tie my two rapa and, you know, to come out like a young woman. So <laughs> there is this infusion and we are having it with our cross-cultural marriages, you know, uh, marriage from one 
a community to the other. So they come in contact and gradually you see uh, the slide shift. Looking at the music that he talked about, mm. you can see that many of our dance steps are being infused into uh, modern music and people are now talking uh, about, uh, about hip hop and all that. And you saw what Fela did with his music. Mm. You know, his dancers, their costume, they were rich in our culture. And so they communicate things. I recall, if you read one of my textbooks, I have written a lot on African systems. And it, it, one of the things that we do there is that when you see somebody, a dance step, my late grandmother used to teach me that there is a dance step for rite of passage of the dead. Wow. Hmm. And so once they move that type of step, it will tell you the kind of person. And again, you see tradition. We, we have um, what we call... Um, gun salutes. They used to have it with the use of cannon shots in the past. Mm. And so you don't see people now putting the cannon into the soil, you know, stocking it there and to put the gunpowder. So what they do is to shoot, you know, with modern guns to give the 21 gun salute when you see a very royal highness pass away. And that tells you that a mighty tree has fallen in that community. Wow. Now, uh, Prof is loaded. <laughs> Prof, <laughs> honest, and that's where that's Prof. where I, I was actually yes. leading to. Mm. Prof, you've said so much, yes. right? And I'm tempted to give you a little suggestion. I won't call it an advice because you may have even thought about it. Prof, you have written books and you've written articles. Have you done any documentaries yes. that would explicitly, you know? help us in understanding some of these things have you attempted to do any documentaries on these things because these are no. these these are these are these this is information that we must hand down we must preserve you know preserve and mm. hand down to the coming generation true truly i haven't done anyone but um i i teach i teach this when i'm teaching my students but i i think that it's a good suggestion to try and do a documentary mm. uh, so that um they can play at their own convenience and you know other people other people can also have access with now with digital platforms okay uh, with digital platforms so so and without we, permission we will, from we, fumi we, we will not say we won't <laughs> say much on, on that, that. We'll just direct you to Plus TV Africa. <laughs> I'm, sure, and I'm, very, I'm very sure they'll be glad to collaborate with you on that. Yes. So, Seriously. Um, uh, um, um, okay. Yeah, Prof, I, I, I was going to ask Prof mm. something as well, if you don't Go mind. Um, now, we're looking at a chicken and egg uh, situation, maybe. Culture and tradition. Is culture subsumed in tradition or vice versa? On the contrary, I think um, tradition is subsumed in our culture. Mm. Um, culture is more is broad, and that is why Thomas Hosborn say is the invention of man. And when done in perpetuity, becomes the way of life of a people. And so gradually, you see that we have a culture, and culture. That's why you have expressions like popular culture. Mm. I don't think you have expression like popular tradition. On the contrary, you have a popular culture. Culture is larger and culture evolves uh, faster, in my own opinion, than tradition. Tradition is actually uh, more conservative than culture. Okay, Prof. Um, as we gradually come towards the end of this first segment with you, we have another 25, 30 minutes with you on the other side. Uh, let, let's hear your you know, thoughts on tradition and its value in this very fast changing world, what can you say about it? Well, I, I think traditions are very critical for us to have the right values. In my own opinion, um, when uh, one of the things that happened to me when I was uh, going outside the country for the first time is that I have to uh, begin to call a 74-year-old man, Andrew, good morning, how are you, Andrew? I, I just can't do that back home here in Nigeria. Somebody was going to smack me or, or hit my mouth to say that you lack respect. Mm. And I think that is one of our bane in this country. And also, when you look at things like corruption that we're fighting today, bad governance and all that, I recall one former president saying something like, um, they, they didn't, they, 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 they are not corrupt, they are thieves, you know, because stealing is something that is minute. You can have it within our culture, there's expression for that thing. But things like 
um, um, uh, embezzlement. We don't have that. We don't have that. So when you have people embezzling, it's because these are signs of um, loss of culture. We've lost our culture because in the past, when you see things, people used to leave their articles for trade outside. And people know the amount, they will sell it and drop the money. They already know about here. The people just look here and then there's nobody. They just uh, cut those things away. So Precisely. we are suffering. Yeah. We are suffering from um, the fact that we have not upheld our culture. We have not upheld our tradition. Okay. And so in terms of the values that we have today, it, until we go back to our basis, things are wrong. Thank and you. you see, people, you have a lot of sociologists. That is why people are saying that. You know, if we want to get things right in this country, we need sociologists to explain to us what has happened to our society. Mm. And that is how, and, you know, that's one of the ways we can begin to get value reorientation. It's not enough to set up agencies. We have this penchant as a country to throw commissions, throw positions, throw offices at problems without looking at the reality. And, Generally, uh, people graduate experts, but our experts are underutilized, okay. and that is why we are where we are. Please wow. call out the sociologists, the anthropologists, to come and deal with us in terms of mindset change, in terms of our culture, in terms of our tradition, if we must rebuild our country. Yeah, Thank and you. Those, are, those, are, those are pertinent questions sure. begging to be... Sure to be answered. Yeah. Thank you so much, Prof. At least now we can say that our national anthem, our national holidays, beliefs and customs and other things like that uh, are wow. really valued and treasured aspects of our tradition uh, and our unique identity, of course, mm. by extension. Yeah. Uh, Prof, I want to thank you. We want to thank you so much for your input on this segment because we have you on the next segment again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Prof, for your time. We wish you, well, all the best. We learned while we're going through your um, CV that you launched um, an NGO, exactly a media advocacy NGO. And um, we might find some time to talk about that when we do come back after the break. Thank you. But please stay Thank on because when we come back on the second segment, we will, together with you, be looking at the similarities and, and the differences, differences yeah. you know, between culture and tradition in details. Please don't go away. It's time to take another break when we come back more on the show.